Thanks to Judicial Watch, we now have even more evidence in corruption and incompetence at the highest levels of our bureaucracy. Newly uncovered documents are showing that the conduit of the deep state himself, Bruce Orr, was actually given a whopping $28,000 bonus and a raise. Compliments of you, the American people, during the very height of the Russia witch hunt. But that's not all. Yet another discovery from Judicial Watch is revealing how the Clinton email investigation was so botched that important investigatory notes are now totally missing, while others are damaged beyond repair. Nothing to see there, folks. Join us now, joining us now with more is Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton and Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Greg, I'll, I'll go to you on this again. Speaking of these inequities, it, it, this magical information appears to, on Trump all the time about Kalimnik being a rushing intelligence guy, despite the fact that the State Department used him. We found out with the Trump Tower meeting with Veselnitskaya that this was so horrible for Don Trump Jr., yet Veselnitskaya was working with the company paid for by Hillary. And yet when it comes to information on the Clintons, it all seems to magically disappear into this black hole. Unequal justice, selective prosecution became the hallmarks of the Obama administration and James Comey and, uh, and Robert Mueller. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, Huma Abedin told the FBI, oh, there was no hacking of Clinton's server. Documents show that was simply untrue. The Chinese had hacked her server and she knew it. So that appears to have been a lie. Uma Abedin and Cheryl Mills also told the FBI, and again, this is under oath, oh, we don't know anything about Hillary Clinton using a private, unauthorized server. Documents show they were talking about it, communicating about it. And yet, they were never prosecuted. Comey was asked about that. Why didn't you prosecute? Oh, he said, you know, failing memories should be forgiven. So the lesson here is, if you're a friend of Hillary Clinton, you get a free pass. And if you so much as cough and sneeze in the vicinity of Donald Trump, the full force of the federal government will come after you with a vengeance. Yeah, Mike Flynn and George Papadopoulos' sure. failing memories weren't forgiven at all. They were thrown in jail. That's right. Ridiculous. Tom, I'll go to you. Judicial Watch has been doing just tremendous work lately, Tom. And your recent discovery here of this missing information with the FBI. I have a theory on this. Tell me if you think I'm right. Um, it, this is the inspector general of the intelligence community's notes with the FBI, correct? Some of them that are missing? Is That's it possible, right. I mean, you know it better than I do, you guys were the ones who foiled it, is it possible that was some kind of a damage assessment done by the intelligence community about Hillary Clinton's email, if it was hacked and what was out there? Well, the dates line up. Uh, the missing meeting notes are from a meeting that the intelligence community IG had with Peter Strzok and company, it looks like, about a month after the ICIG referred it to DOJ. So they had this, the intelligence community refer to the Justice Department, Hillary Clinton, for investigation over her missing emails, national security implications. They have a meeting about the issue a month later, and the notes are nowhere to be found. And it looks like it lines up with discussions the agencies had about whether the Chinese were able to gain access to uh, virtually all of her emails. And the notes are gone. And uh, it's as a result of a lawsuit that it's come out. It's not a voluntary disclosure. And, it, you know, to me, it just shows you they didn't care. I mean, it was a sham investigation. Oh, they lost some notes. Who cares? Last week, they admitted to us that there were 302s, four witnesses. The interview statements were missing. So, you know, if you don't care about the investigation, you know it's wired. Uh, you're not going to do the basics like keep notes of the meetings and be diligent in, in recording everything that happened. You know, one of the things, Greg, I saw in there in the a Judicial Watch report on this was the potential that some of this Hillary Clinton information that was on the server may have appeared on the dark web, and some of it was obviously classified yep. with classified markings being oh, stripped sure. out. I mean, this is, this is really staggering information. We're talking about the Secretary of State. She's not trafficking in low-level information. You know, when I was an introductory Secret Service agent, we worked Treasury check cases. You know, they were, they were nice to work, but they weren't national right. security cases. This is the real deal. She was the Secretary of State. Oh, absolutely. And she jeopardized national security. She didn't care. Obama didn't care. Obama went on national television, in fact, on Fox News with Chris Wallace, and said, oh, she didn't jeopardize national security. She was just a little careless. And, of course, that was the clarion call to Comey and the Department of Justice to stomp their foot on the scales of justice and clear Hillary Clinton, even though 
They knew she had certainly committed crimes, more than 100 of them, representing 110 classified documents on her unauthorized server. Comey twisted the law, contorted the facts to absolve Hillary Clinton, making the announcement on the very day that his FBI is furtively meeting in London with the author of the phony dossier, and that was the beginning of the Russia hoax that begat the witch hunt. You know, Tom, doubling down on what Greg had to say here, the beginning of this investigation obviously has become a scandal in and of itself because the FBI story doesn't seem to make any sense when you analyze it with clear eyes. They said it started with the George Papadopoulos tip to Downer at the end of July, July 31st. But the problem, Tom, is we have FBI agents over two weeks before, in the middle of July, before July 31st, in London, meeting with Christopher Steele and the dossier. Is the big scandal here the fact that the FBI has not been telling us the full story the entire time about the origins of this case? Is that what Bill Barr is going to give us? Well, Mueller didn't tell us the full story about the origins of the case. They suggested it started much later than it actually did. Uh, you know, the FBI hasn't, quote, told us anything. It's all been leaks and suppositions. Mueller was supposed to tell us the truth. And if you've seen, uh, the Mueller dossier uh, is being shown to be a sham. I, if I were the AG, uh, Dan, I, I would issue a black box warning about with the Mueller report, the equivalent of a box. <laughs> you can't trust it. We disavow it. It's there if you want to look at it. There may be some facts you're able to double check, but we can't vouch for it. I love that. And, you know, and, and so we've got these documents coming out, for instance, that Bruce Ward's getting uh, an unusual bonus, at least given his recent salary history, in the middle of the Russiagate investigation, just about at the, at the time he's launched by the FBI and DOJ to be the back channel, as you de uh, pointed out, uh, to Christopher Steele after the FBI fired him. So he gets this big bonus. Then it comes out that he was dealing with Christopher Steele on the down low because evidently Sessions and company didn't know about it, so they removed him. And you know what? They kicked yeah. him upstairs to this international group and gave him a raise. Yeah. Greg, I've hypothesized from the start that Orr is the key to this whole case. He seems to be the information launderer, as I refer to. He wasn't in money laundering. He was laundering information. He was sure. making illegitimate information look real because it came in through his position, through his wife and him at the DOJ. Now he gets a raise for it. But one of the abnormalities in this case, I know you've been all over in your books, Simpson and Orr, their stories don't make sense. Simpson said he contacted uh, them after the election in Thanksgiving, and uh, contacted Orr at, at, around Thanksgiving, but Orr is saying he made contact with Simpson in August. So obviously yeah. those stories can't marry up. Yeah, they, and Nellie Orr has received a criminal referral because of that very fact. Um, and you're right, Bruce Orr and Glenn Simpson's testimony um, don't match up. I, I think Glenn Simpson's in a world of legal trouble uh, which is why he eventually invoked the Fifth Amendment. Well, isn't it convenient, too, he says, oh, I just met Orr after the election in November, yeah. when in reality is Orr met him. I mean, it changes the whole story, and it gives Simpson a motive to say that. Yeah, I mean, look, there are so many bad characters in all of this, but Glenn Simpson, Christopher Steele, Bruce Orr, Nellie Orr, and the Orrs, by the way, are profiting uh, by this. Uh, at the same time, yes. they're peddling this phony dossier. Uh, and now we learn today, thanks to uh, Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch, Orr is getting a $28,000 bonus nice. for the work he did that resulted in his demotion. Only an American government yep. can you profit by malfeasance. And we paid for it. And so did you, you America. Know, you paid. There's your tax dollars. Not so quick, hard to you know, work. Quickly, so, Dan, uh, you know, yeah, the, yeah, attorney general, yeah. Yeah, the attorney general should just look at the documents his agency and the FBI are, give, are giving to Judicial Watch. Uh, he can do all the prosecutions he needs to based over that. Right. It's uh, incredible. It's all there in, in, uh, in the public domain already. Well, I hope he does, because this was a major slap in the face that taxpayer dollars are financing this kind of malfeasance. It's really grotesque. I got to get that job. <laughs> right? Not bad, right? It's not exactly chump change either. They got a lot of money.